Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Sally Pinto and I'm from the Yonkers North, neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. We launched back in January of 2020 and we're here to serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We have lots of fun programs and activities and we also have a lot of resources for you as well. Our programs include meditation chair yoga, uh, body mind fitness, bingo, and any other programs that you might be interested in, like arts and gardening. We have our resource specialist, Alexa Smith, who can help you with finding services and activities out there for you, as well as our nurse, Barbara Simone, who can help answer your health-related questions. We're here for you, we're here for our community, and we look forward to seeing you in our programs. Enjoy. Hello, everybody. I'm Alexa Smith, the resource specialist with the Yonkers Mark. I'm here to help with application assistance, referrals for home delivered meals, and transportation services will be coming soon. We also um, offer Zoom activities and Zoom programs. And if you have any other questions or concerns, I'm here to help. Thank you so much and enjoy the program. Welcome, I'm Barbara Simone, registered nurse. I recently retired from Westchester County's health department as a public health nurse. I am now here to try to assist you with any medical, or preventive care issues. Enjoy this program and I'm looking forward to working with you. I walked, I, I've taken classes at the Botanical Garden and for, for 20 years I was in the architectural design industry. And uh, frankly, I mean, I've always been in design. I have a design background, but as I said in my, our last meeting that even though architecture seems to be exterior design and, in, and then there's interior design that goes with it, gardening is exterior design and it's kind of the same, it's the same principles. Today we're going to, what came up last week or last session was that people would like to learn about flower arranging because now we're sort of all back inside. So um, I'm going to give you a few basics. There, there aren't really a lot of rules. Um, it's all about you and your creativity. Um, what do you feel like buying? What, do you, what colors do you like? What's your house look like? Uh, um, I sometimes, you know, we'll go to the store and just buy flowers. We can even do fake flowers, artificial flowers, if they're good ones. Don't scream and yell. That can be good too, if done tastefully. Uh, I brought along, a, the first thing I want to do, if you uh, just keep your eyes open, even if you're outside or whether you're inside or in your house, um, you may find, well, I don't, it may say, I don't have a lot of lovely vases. Well, you might find things in your house that work just fine. Like we all get the flowers with the, the cylindric, cylindrical glass vases and we keep those or we give them to the thrift store because we end up with a thousand of them. But I think it's a good idea when you're in a, in a rummage sale or just poking around your closets, it's amazing what you can find. It's always nice to have a bud vase like this, which is tall and thin. And sometimes there's a bush or a shrub where it's all going to see, but one little guy is coming out. It's great to have like a really nice bud uh, bud show there and because it's just a nice cylindrical vase it really you don't need to fill all the blank spaces it's just a really nice way to put the show off the the bud or this one flower um i just want to show you a couple of things i've collected over the years somebody had a pottery show and this, this was three little vases that are um, all glued together and sometimes um it's nice to say like if you get those uh arrangements you can get at the fruit and veggie store that are like every color under the planet. If you, if you take it apart, you can put like the blue ones in here and the red ones in here and the yellow ones in here. And it, it really separates them out. So you really get to look at each color. Uh, it makes each area look sort of nice and monochromatic and yet you get different heights. And this was just a funky little thing that I found. Um, this is one I picked up, I don't know where it was. This is great, it's very, it's little. So this is only about I would say an inch and a half deep. But if you pick little bitty things, like sometimes a couple of buttercups and a little this and that, and they become in these sort of little bouquets, you just plunk it in there in the water and it sort of spreads out in the front and it's just adorable and it comes in a frame. Uh, I think I found this online somewhere years ago. But if you're having a guest over or you just wanna sort of cheer up a little corner or something like this is really helpful. The, the flowers last about two days. It's not for forever because they're so short. Or you can just get a really nice, Let's say if you found a big, 
like a sunflower or maybe a, um, something like a dahlia and a really great flower. You can just cut it short, put it in there, and then you've just got the flower in a nice frame. It's really, it was really clever. So I like that one. I mean, these are the things that sort of get me thinking. One of my favorites is this guy. Uh, this is the bottom. Uh, I am not the kind of person who loves to stick a whole bunch of flowers in a vase and walk away. I, you probably had people come over and say, oh, here, here's a nice bunch of flowers for you. And, or you take them to somebody's house and they slice off the bottom and they stick them in a tall vase so that the stems are up and the leaves are full, full and it's just too tall and ungainly. So what's nice about this is you can, particularly works with tulips that get a little floppy. This is the opening here. So you can put flowers in here and then they sort of drape and it's really, really clever. Um, you can also find, as I said, one, some of these things I found in my closet, others, some people take old shoes. They have, I'm gonna show you pictures of two of different kinds of things that sort of set the mood as to wherever you wanna put your, your, put your flowers. What you need to do, whether you find them in your yard or out in the store, and this is only one of the few basics. Now let's pretend that I have lovely flowers in my yard at this time of year, which I don't. They're all dried out, but this is a, actually this looks nice. It is a dried hydrangea. So we're just gonna pretend it's a lovely fresh daisy or something. What you do is at the end when you cut it, be sure you do it on an angle like that. And if it's very woody like this one is, gently take a hammer and slightly smush or separate the, the strands inside the, uh, inside the branch because that will help absorb water better. But if it's just a regular uh, flower, just make sure you slice it on an angle very nicely with a knife, not with scissors. And then the next thing you do is you go off, you probably, a lot of you know this anyway, but, and then you just pull off all the leaves because they're the first thing to go and will look really crummy in your vase and your arrangement. And then you've got a flower and a stem. And what I like to do is measure, let's see, let's do this guy. It's hard to do a demonstration on Zoom, but let's say, like this is way too large. So if you cut this down and it would come out more like this. I'm a big believer in cutting down the plant close to the, the flower head. And this is an example of, this is from my calendar last year. I make a calendar every year in my garden. This was an old vase and I had some, I showed this on my last um, presentation. This is uh, allium, which when they explode in the garden, they're pink and then they dry and then they stay like that all summer. And this is one year where I spray painted them gold and just stuck them in a in an old vase I had and they you don't need water or anything. And they just sit there all winter and it was really nice over the holidays because it looked particularly, you know, like fireworks or Christmassy or holiday or explosions or things like that. It, it was really, really quite clever. So. We're going to look at some slides and that will help you um, visualize what I'm trying to talk about. It, it, there's nothing worse than somebody saying, well, there aren't really any rules you have to make up yourself. Well, you, you know yourself better than anybody and you just have to sort of have an eye. Could we have the first slide, please? Um, before we have the first slide, uh, Catherine, yeah. um, one of the oh, questions yeah. was, what is the name of that donut, the donut vase? The one you just showed, what was the name of that? Is it I don't know. It just was online. Glass vase. Glass vase. Whole... That looks like a donut. Okay. Good. Uh, that's good. Kind of, you can go online and if you just say like glass vases, um, yeah, online solves a million problems. I, matter of fact, I'm going to show you slides today that come from a book I love, but some of them from a magazine online. Nowadays, you can Google anything. So for instance, if you're interested in table arrangements for Thanksgiving, just Google in Thanksgiving table decor and boom, up come a million photos. And the great thing about all of this is you don't have to spend a lot of money. It's how you present it to the outside world or even just to yourself. Okay. On, uh, obviously the woman had a great big compote, but not the woman, just could be a man as well, or the flower designer, I should say. Obviously had a great big uh, terrain for, uh, what do you call that stuff? I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind here. Um, you know, when you thrill it with fruit and everything. Well, anyway, a big dessert thing. What's it called? Anybody else here help me out? It's not, uh, well, whatever. She had a great big bowl, sorry about that. And well, instead of just sort of jamming everything in, she only used, this is obviously for a wedding or something that's matching the tablecloth. She uses, or I'm gonna say she, maybe it's a man, uh, 
are pink and white, but they're sort of, they're, they're in there tightly, but they're loose. And then to get, cut them longer, she has some of them spilling over the side with what looked like, um, not sure what that plant is yet. I can't quite see them, but you know, it's really, it's formal, it's lovely, but it's also very relaxed. And uh, I think it's just a really, it shows you how you can get really fancy without making it look really stiff. I'm not into stiff things. I like structure and organization, but then I like a little freedom and casualness attached. Next, please. This is wonderful. I love this one. This is an example of taking just white things that you have. Maybe you just like to have, I, I tend to do a lot of monochromatics and I think sometimes a lot of other people do too. So clearly there's some Asiatic lilies here and some daisies. Uh, they put, and you can also put interesting stones at the bottom. She's obviously got two glass containers that are the same shape, but two different sizes. And this just makes a beautiful arrangement the way she's got the, the fern leaf up and over the daisies really sort of frames the daisies. They're not just sort of sitting there as a little sister. I just thought this was a really beautiful arrangement, particularly since the background is also white and with lovely sort of soft greens. Next. I also think this is very clever. You, you don't have to go up when you have a vase, you can go out. I have one like this. It's, uh, it's again, it's glass. It is fun, times, it's fun sometimes to be able to see the design that happens with the stems when they go into the water. Uh, I know sometimes when you get a flower arrangement from a, a florist, they take a great big palm leaf or something and they wrap it around the inside, which is also quite, quite stunning. This person obviously took the, uh, a little clump of lovely things in the middle and then sprayed the longer ones out to the side. And you get a nice horizontal look to it. And the basic of starting a vase, is, a flower arrangement is you take the stiff ones first. So if you, uh, for instance, obviously she started with the, it's a little hard for me to see what's on on the right there. The purple on the right and the, what looks like little orchids on the left they have a thicker, more woody branch. And so you start with the framework in there and then you add the uh, shorter ones and the more soft ones as you build in the middle. Okay, next. And this is one, like a lot of people just like to go around their garden and pick a bunch of the same thing. I think these look like marigolds, I'm not sure. Uh, and then just plunk them in a vase. But what she did was, because actually this is from a woman in Britain whose book I have, who I really like a lot. And she didn't just sort of stick them in a dumb old leftover vase. She found a really nice copper pot or, or um, pottery that reflected the kitchen. And also uh, the, the plants are the same color as the little tomatoes at the bottom. And this is a little more stiff, but it's very country-like because she's got it very casual. And she left a lot of the leaves on, which in this case, because they're marigolds, they could probably pretty, Pretty, stand up pretty well. But again, I don't know how long this one lasted. They don't last forever. Um, but I just, I thought this was clever how she combined the fruit with the flowers. Next. And it's important to have a, a flower arrangement that sort of matches your decor or the, what your house looks like or what mood you're in. This is obviously someone who really treasures old things and family heirlooms. And so she got a rustic picture and put in some very loose, loosely arranged, but uh, beautifully sort of faded colors that sort of go with all the old things. Um, and sometimes doing this very casual arrangements take a lot more work than a formal one, because you know, you'll sit down in the couch and look back and think, eh, that guy doesn't quite fit. So he's got to hang out a little more. Or this guy's got to stand up a little more. It's, it is harder to like, if you're trying to drape drapery, I remember I was, when I was in the design world, we had to drape these long drapes on the floor but we had to make it look like they just fell there and it took us a half an hour to, to get that done. So sometimes doing the more casual stuff takes longer, but I really love the, the, uh, the finished result. I think it's really stunning. Next. This was clever. Uh, this one is, she just sort of cut really close to the top. She took a basket and filled it. Obviously you have to put something in there like a bowl. She's obviously got a very wide bowl in this basket and filled it with water. And then it's, it's a very low arrangement. She just stuck the stems, which are probably maybe two to three inches long at the most, and just put, crowded them all in there. 
and it's it's very low and it's very yellow and it's just very simple but really beautifully presented. I think low things can be really clever and attractive. Number eight. This is one of the few examples where long stems sticking up, I think works well because the stems are very stiff. These are uh, poppies. These actually may not even be real, I'm not sure. But when you get something that has graceful stems that are stiff, that is a, a good way to have them stick up because they, they kind of draw your eye up and then to, to, to uh, cement it all, she's put a ribbon around the top of the vase that's the same color as the poppies. And again, she's got a yellow tablecloth. It all kind of just brightens a corner, but yet fits in. Next. And this is an example where sometimes it is fun to have just every color under the planet at once. And what this person did was take several little cups and old pitchers and I guess those are two cups and an old pitcher where it's just very, very sort of country chic and busy. And then she arranged all the same colors on the top and it's, it's bright and it's cheerful. It's good for a sun porch or when you wanna strike that kind of a mood. Next. I love this one. Uh, this was a very interesting vase, probably sitting around the house. And she thought, oh, and then there's, you know, there's some squiggles on it, like the, the uh, what is that called? It's the, uh, the walking stick. Again, my, I'm sorry, I'm having you know, senior moments here. The um, Henry Lauder's walking stick, which are those squiggly branchy things. And you can sometimes use branches without anything on them if they're an interesting shape. And the, the uh, daffodils with the squiggly, match exactly what's going on in the vase. Of course, the light, you know, helps too. That makes a nice shadow on the wall. But this also points out it doesn't have to be symmetrical all the time. Matter of fact, I like things that are a little asymmetrical. I think this is very clever. It looks very alive. And it gave the old pitcher some use. It's great for an old pitcher if it's got a crack in it, you'll never be able to put it on the table again, except to maybe put some flowers in it, and just tape up the old crack on the inside. Next. I thought this was clever. Every once in a while you have an event or something where you need to sort of just a little extra crafty and a little extra uh, clever and formal. I am not a crafty person, but I thought this was, this was clever. Uh, you just, and the, the little directions were on the side. You just cut some tissue paper. It doesn't have to be these colors. Cut them in uh, two sheets with little triangles at the end, and then you alternate them and wrap them around your flower, stick the bouquet in there, and in you go. And you know, with a nice tall, it's a great thing to do with these old, these vases you get from those flower arrangements you are gifted. Uh, put some nice clear stones at the bottom or pebbles and there you go. Next. This is a nice arrangement, obviously it took some time but it looks like she just threw them in the basket. Uh, inside the basket obviously are, is, is a, some kind of porcelain or pottery or um, glass or even plastic, sometimes old plastic containers work well with these. And she obviously went into a field and picked up, a, saw a lovely set of things that looked just beautiful. And so she picked up all of them and they belonged in the field together and now they're together in the vase. And she's got them sort of haphazardly in there, but it all works and it just is very relaxing. And it's a really nice thing to have on a day when you're just feeling really uh, not so formal and stiff. I just think this is really fun. And it doesn't look messy, even though it's, but that's another thing about design. You have to know when to stop. I think one of my criticisms of the HGTV network, one is there's not enough G, it's all H. Uh, but when the designers get in there, they, they sort of tend more of a decorate, decoratory uh, point of view. And a lot of them just don't know when to stop. And I think the, the key thing, particularly with flower arranging is know when to stop. And she's allowed, for instance, on this one, a couple of the, uh, the leaves and things to sort of fall down. And then she just left them there on the table. Next. Sometimes you just wanna keep it really simple. She's obviously got three little vases, puts them together. Um, she's got two hosta leaves there. She's got a Gerbera daisy and the leaf of something in the front, I'm not sure what it is. And that's just very simple. It's very Asian looking. It's very quiet. It's very nice in a bathroom or if you have a guest bathroom. And um, I just thought it was you know, it called keeping it simple, knowing when to stop. She just put those four items together and there it is. Really relaxing and calming. And that again, would be a nice thing for someone who's really into wellness because this 
this is a really calming and soothing image. Next. And sometimes you don't need to get fabulous flowers. You just go out in your yard and pick up some ornamental grasses. I have a bunch of them in the front on a dry hill because I don't feel like dealing with the dry hill. And frequently this time of year, I'll go out and pick a couple of grasses, stick them in a nice simple vase. It's sort of the same color. So we have a nice monochromatic look again. And there you have it. It's really lovely and it didn't cost a cent. Next. This, uh, again, relaxing, not too many flowers, but a really nice collection of old pots, of old, uh, excuse me, an old pot and then uh, three different pitchers. Uh, and it's just, it makes a nice combination, I think. The, the earthy colors, one or two big flowers, a lot of little ephemeral leaves around it. And just it just looks casual, but formal, but casual and really inviting and breathable. It makes me feel like I could breathe. Next. Water is another good thing to do. Sometimes uh, your plants don't look so great, but a couple of nice blooms. So what you can do is get a couple of saucers or interesting plates that you might have that sometimes you might use for nuts or something at a party. But if you fill them with water and put them out like this and take a couple of the, you think beautiful, uh, which these are, beautiful flowers, the blooms, and maybe a few leaves and just casually put them in water, it's really stunning. Again, very Asian in its look. Next. This is the other extreme, but sometimes, you know, if you have a sunroom with, and there are people who love to get into all these different textures and things. Uh, if you look to the right and then in the middle on the left, the, the yellow vase, and then there's two potteries. It's very, very country and cute, but it works. It's all sort of fits together and it matches the fruit and the pillows. And it's not matchy matchy. It's just all sort of makes the same warm, cozy statement. You know, and there's a room in your house perhaps that, that might take that. Next. And this is another room with a whole different feel. Again, nice quiet area, soft, light colors, and very casually arranged, mostly foliage with um, some old pots. Next. Now, some of you had asked about um, table arrangements. So I, I got a couple of these off the Real Simple website. And if you go there, it's just full of ideas. Uh, the, as I said, for Google, just go through it a lot. This is simply uh, a lot of oak leaves, little pumpkins, white and orange, and maybe some speckled ones, little candles, and that's it. Uh, it's easy, it's simple, and it, it really makes quite a statement. It doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Next. This was one for something a little more formal, maybe for Christmas. She's got a lot of greenery and some fruit uh, that are all sort of dark reds and, uh, to go against the greenery. The greenery includes an uh, artichoke or two. And then with the dark eggplants, the, the pears and the red candles. It's just, again, it's casual. It, we, it's like a big garland in the middle of the table and uh, looks nice with the red wine too and little green cups. Again, casual, it all matches, but it's not stiff. Next. This I wanted to show you because a lot of times you have old fabric around, you think, how am I gonna do with this? I tend to do this a lot at Christmas. I have to have a hunk of gold lame that I keep in the attic. I don't know why I have it and it's fringed at the edge, but I bring it down to Christmas time and I put it in the middle of the table. Like this was obviously an old um, scarf or something. And if you just clump the fabric in the middle of the table, depending on what it looks like, you could then add candles or fruit or something that you have that, that kind of blends with it. And then obviously the candles really help. And the last one, this doesn't, and you don't always have to use color. Uh, sometimes, particularly this time of year, a lot of, as I showed you with the uh, hydrangea here, a lot of the dried forms are gorgeous and, and old seed pods are great. And not, your pumpkins don't always have to be orange. And if you've got a little macrame or a little woven table runner there, it's, it's just a whole nother feel with the same materials. It's just, they come in different colors. So that's it. I just wanted to show you a range of the kind of things that people do and that you can do, and it's endless. It's absolutely endless. But it does depend on your eye and your sense of taste and what you like and what you have available to you. So that's it for now. And I'd love to hear your ideas, what you do at home and how you figure it out. Because candles candles really help a lot. Oh, I, and now can we go back to me on the Zoom? Because I did want to show you two things. Hold on, there we go. Um, 
The other thing you can do with fake things, this is a pumpkin, whoops. And if you just buy uh, sort of fake dried things, but they're a nice quality and you just glue them on top of the pumpkin. I've had this for two years and this pumpkin has not rotted at all. But it, again, you can just bring it out the following year. Or, and some of these things are, are real, obviously the pine cone is real. And that, that's kind of nice. And then this is something I found in a, in a gift store in Bronxville that doesn't exist anymore, which is too bad. But this was a, just an old wooden uh, distressed box and it's got fake artichokes in it. But I really like the look of it. And it's the kind of thing you could do too if you found an old box or an old tin or something. You could also buy fake flowers and put those in there any way you'd like. I like this because it's kind of symmetrical and very designed. But, um, and if you don't have any flowers, it's kind of fun to whisk that out. So it, I'm not against fake flowers. I'm just, I, I'm against plastic flowers. And I, I just think there's so many clever ways you can do it. If you just look, pick the right things that look really, really of good quality. Sometimes people don't even know. And then you cut them up and you use them again another year. So it's all about your head and your imagination and what strikes you. Like go into a store and just, just, keep, your, just keep your eyes and ears open, eyes particularly. Well, sometimes you just have to go outside and pick up a lot of oak leaves that are on the ground. I mean, everybody's at these right now, pretty clear. Uh, bag of nuts from the grocery store, uh, you know, the pine cones, even some pine leaf needles may have, they have, may have fallen down, and then maybe an orange pump or something to go in with it because it's very fally. So you kind of want to use the natural things that are, are outside. Pardon me, I'm allergic to everything this season of the year, so I'm going to blow my nose again a lot. So go ahead. I do have one question. I, I, I landed up, um, are you into herbs at yeah. all? Herbs, okay. Um, I kind of redid part of my kitchen and in the, the window, I've got like three different um, uh, lengths of rope and then there's a little pail for each one of them. I've got three. And the problem is I've never had herbs that I grew inside. Um, and I don't think I'm doing something right. I mean, it's hard. Is it? Is it hard? It's very to hard because they like they like a lot of sun. They don't like a lot of water. And, okay. Uh, I may might be killing them with too much water. Yeah, yeah. Once we went through this last time, the best, the, the worst thing you can do for a plant is overwater it. Let it tell you that it's hungry. Uh, well, the, go ahead. Go ahead. And some of the things are turning like black. What, what, what is that on, on my oregano? Uh, Any tiny little leaves, circles, and they well, turn it's, it's, on my basil? It's that, that usually means they're getting frosted. Are no, no, this, no, we're in Florida. You're not frosted. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I would say they are too wet. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you're, that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, a vase of flowers that my daughter received and it's absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if I hold it up, if you can see it. Oh yeah. Yes, and that's very clever too. It isn't just, you know, everything yeah. stuck a little. Yeah. I don't like arrangements, this looks great. I don't like arrangements personally that look like they have a girdle on, you know? And <laughs> you know, if you buy flowers online with a lot of the, the fast online places, you know, delivery tomorrow, I can't remember what they're called. Yeah. but they look a little a little too tight and you want to think but the flowers need to breathe it's like over pruning your shrubs they need to flop and look really natural to me now everybody has their own taste but i like to let the flowers look like they've just they're so thrilled to be in your house and they're relaxed and they're here to entertain you rather than let me out of here you know that's just my reaction but i sometimes go in people's houses and they've got them very stiff you want to go can i go over there and fix your flowers for you um they need air and they need I mean, that's what they normally need, air and light. And when you jam them in a vase, it's tough. I'm not saying they can't be tight. But, oh, I should have put in a picture of, I was in Chicago taking my granddaughters out for tea at the Drake. And when you walk in the Drake, I wish I had a picture of this. Maybe I'll send it around. They have in the middle of the, and I think they might do it in the plaza too, or maybe they used to. They have a, a, an arrangement in the middle of the room and all the tables are sitting around it that has got to be 10 feet high. I don't know how they put this together. Um, it's, you know, it takes your breath away. And of course there's a pond and a lovely lady with a harp, but it's, it's 10 feet high and it's all white. And it, you just know you're in heaven, you're in somewhere else. 
Oh, I didn't talk about what's in the in the jar if you keep them from flopping. If you don't, you can't go buy those pieces of foam and they have those things at Michael's or wherever. You can also uh, just take some branches, which happens when you get flowers sometimes delivered. Why do I keep coming back to myself? Um, and you just twist them all around and throw them in there as a ball and that'll give you a little, little, like a little, uh, the lat would be a girdle, a little, a little framework for the sticking the flowers in. And you don't really have to go buy all those fancy things. We have one more question. Is it true that aspirins keep the flowers longer? I don't know. I don't know if that's an old wives tale or not. I've also heard sugar. Heard sugar. Uh, sometimes if I buy flowers, they come with like if you, uh, they come with a little packet. I don't know if it works or not. I put it in there. Some things just don't last a long time. Other things do. And tulips grow about an inch a day. So I tend to use a lot of tulips in the spring and I like them to flop sort of over very gracefully, but you do have to come in every day. And if you don't want them to get too far out, you have to chop them back a bit. How often do you change water on the flowers? How do you know when to change the water? Well, as, as Wally said, it gets to look a little scuzzy. It should be more than that. Sometimes you think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And it, it, what these are the shoulds and what we really do are two different things. Uh, okay, every couple of days, the plants get a little slimy at the bottom. And sometimes I just rinse them off, put them back in there and change the water. So we wanted to know about someone, tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, zucchini, peas, peppers, cucumbers, lettuce, broccoli, and basil. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're all vegetables and, and they go in the vegetable garden. What do they want to know? It's very important um, you have very fer except for the herbs, no fertilizer, but it's, it's really important. You're, it's all about the soil and mulching. Very, very important. Can you grow them inside or do you have to grow them outside? Or could you have a little box inside? Uh, it depends on where you are. If you have a you know, sunroom or a bright sunny area, uh, that works. If you're in an apartment, it's a little harder. Oh, somebody's in New York. It depends on where you are. It, is your place, if you're in an apartment, it's too hot. What they need is sun and not overly watered. Just like with um, Diane, was it with a Diane? Yes. Uh, it's hard otherwise. They get very leggy because they get they they get stretchy because they look for the sun. I've tried it a couple of times, but there's a, there's a lot of babysitting going on, and you can buy. My sister sent me this adorable little bo uh, box, and it had little herbs, and it had a little writing on the outside, and it was adorable. But trying to keep those herbs going, and they, I had to put them in a room where there was a lot of sun, where a better amount of sun and you know, you forget about them. It, it's not easy. It's you got to babysit them. I think it can be done, but it depends on where you are. You have to have a really lovely sunroom. What I about know. outdoors? Do do you plant them under a tree? Do you, if they need more sun, like what part of the property or what you know? Can you give them guidance? They love a hot. The hotter and the sunnier part of your yard, the better. Um, and good soil, a lot of mulch. I use uh, hay. Do not use dyed mulch at all under any circumstances. I use hay, straw, whatever I can find for free. Like this is a good time of year to go around <laughs> after Thanksgiving and steal. People put their bales of hay out that they put for decoration on their property. They'll put them out for the garbage men, pick them up and take them home. Uh, and uh, lots of good nutrients really amend the soil. Make sure there's a lot of compost and you know worm castings and all sorts of good stuff. But are, some, are some vegetables better in, in certain times of the year or is it okay to have a vegetable garden with all these items that they have to have? Oh, you can have all of them. The, some of them like the spinach and stuff, the, uh, the, the broccoli, the spinach, they're all cold weather crops. So they're very good in the fall and in the early spring. They can take cold. Things like what happens when it gets too hot, they bolt. In other words, they start to grow really tall and flower and then they're, they're yellowy and they don't taste very good. So that those those kind of crops tend to be done early when it's chillier in the spring and in the fall. The other stuff, hot, hot, hot. I mean, they love tomatoes, love midsummer, eggplants do, herbs definitely. And so if you have a spot that just is blindingly, you know, hot that you can't stand, boy, those tomatoes think that's the greatest thing ever. And the other thing about the tomatoes is if you can. Every, you know, they come determinate and indeterminate. 
Indeterminate means they just keep growing. Determinate means they come with a size that will only let, like, be about five feet tall. So, and which either one you have, you have to have support for it. And then, uh, sorry, the dog had a scratch. The, um, then when you, in about midsummer, keep, uh, let's see, I have, to, I have a piece of something that you can see. Pardon me, it's very low tech. All right, here's your plant stem, and here's uh, the side, side shoot. And sometimes in the middle, in the middle of the main stem and the side branch, you get these little suckers. What you have to do every couple of days is just go around and pinch off the suckers, because otherwise you're gonna get a lot of leaves and not that many tomatoes. And then in the middle of the summer, it's good to go around and cut back several leaves so that the light get in, gets into the buds and the little fruit that's growing, rather than if it's too shady in there, that's gonna be a problem. It, it doesn't make your tomatoes look all that more attractive, but they're not necessarily a pretty plant anyway. They're just fabulous to the, the, on the fruit they produce. So either get rid of the suckers as well, and then also cut back some of the leaves around. So there's a lot more air that gets back in. So another question on long, how do you keep them during the winter? Not easy. <laughs> uh, as I said, it depends on where you live. If you have a, a lovely sunny uh, sunroom with for a, um, for instance, with a slate floor, that's perfect. But other than that, it, it ain't easy. You can try. I mean, always give it a shot, but just don't overwater. Because remember, it's hotter in there and the sun is, the, the light is lower. And then you sometimes get white fly inside. If it gets too damp, it brings the white fly. Like, have you ever been in a greenhouse that's really steamy? There's just white fly everywhere. So, that's my best advice for that. I'd love to have a great answer for you, but it's, it, ain't, it is not easy. An earlier um, comment was, I have heard that pennies in the water keep flowers fresh. I tried that with little success. And someone else mentioned newer pennies or bank pennies. What's your, what's your take on that? Again, I, I don't really know. It's some of these old wives sales work. Sometimes they don't. Uh, sometimes the plant, like a tulip is meant to last at least a week or two. Others are not. Um, I think the, the key is to keep, uh, like for instance, if this is in the water and it starts to get a little slimy, just cut it again on an angle and refresh where the water source goes in because it's, it's the moment you cut a flower, it starts to die. So you're getting, you're arranging flowers that are on their way out. So you do the best you can to keep them there, but it depends on what it is. If I have a big arrangement, I frequently come through and whatever's starting to look a little poopy, I pull him out or pull those out. And then some of them really get, uh, they're happier the longer they sit there. So when you, when you do a, an arrangement, it's nice to have a few flowers that are only in bud so that they are now about to come out whereas the other ones that are fading, you can pull out. You have a couple more questions. What is white fly? Ugh, an annoying teeny weeny, it's a teeny weeny little, it looks like an aphid, but it's a little white fly, it's teeny. And it's over there, they will be underneath the leaves of the plant. So if you think you've got it, look under the leaves. And when you see little bitty white things, you go, ugh. So then you go and you take either uh, alcohol on a cotton ball and just wipe the undersides of the leaves. Hmm. If you've got a really bad infestation, I would just say throw the plant out, but try to catch it early. Hmm. The other thing you can get is thing called scale, which look like little scabs on the plant. And if you slide your finger under it, it'll slip off. But that's again, if it's get, you know, you can take one or two of them and just get rid of them, that's fine. But if they get really infested, just, it's not worth it because it'll jump to other plants. Uh, make you, it'll make you crazy. It's not worth it. I said a, a good gardener will know when to throw it, to throw something out. Someone asked about flowers and bushes to attract birds in the fall and winter and also for uh, for deer to help them get through the winter. Are they encouraging deer? That's interesting. <laughs> That's the first <laughs> part. Uh, I don't have deer, thank God. Um, well, deer will eat anything. Just and open your yard and say, here it is. Uh, they don't need to be encouraged. Most people or everybody I know is trying to encourage them to not eat everything they have, particularly the evergreens, because that's what people rely on to look at it at their snowy windows. The best thing for birds are plants that produce seeds. All, all, all plants, will, all shrubs particularly, will produce 
uh, seeds in the, in the fall, but ones that have berries are really nice. Um, you know, you just look at the life cycle of the plant, but they all produce seeds and stuff. That's why a lot of people don't deadhead their plants once the fall comes and everything starts to look dead like now. They leave the plant there so that the birds can at least eat, eat the seeds. And a lot of shrubs will get berries in the, in the fall, which is also really nice. They like that. If it's just a bunch of leaves, they don't, like they don't, they aren't attracted particularly to anything that's just like an evergreen because it's just an evergreen. They don't, and I, well, yeah, they, they don't even, they don't need a pine cones particularly, but little bugs like pine cones. I mean, you do want to encourage certain good bugs in your yard. That's why it's nice to have a couple of maybe old logs sort of lying around in your flower bed, sort of, as, it looks like decoration, but it, you know, there are good bugs in the yard. There are not all bad and they, the good bugs need a place to sleep over the winter. So. What materials can you use to cover the plants if you don't have a greenhouse? What, well, you don't have to put, you don't have to cover all of them. Matter of fact, I really, I mulch my garden in the winter. That's, and, and snow is actually, as much as it annoys me as I get older, uh, snow is nature's blanket, but you don't have to cover your plants. Uh, just put mulch around the bottom, if, um, particularly the shrubs. People, if you have foundation shrubs, people tend to sort of ignore them, but they, they need, they need uh, food and help in the wintertime as well because they dry out. So a good thing to do is if you can scratch a little fertilizer around the bottom in the fall, and then when you, instead of getting your blow and go guy to come, or if he does come, have him blow the leaves underneath your shrubs and they will make a nice blanket for the roots. They'll help, as they decompose, they'll feed the soil. And then you don't have to run out in the spring and buy all those bags of fertilizer uh, from the big box stores. I mean, they, nature's got a whole full cycle there that doesn't rely on the stores. And then the leaves will break down. The only ones you have to worry about are oak leaves because they're thick and they're big. But if you have other ones that are smaller, you can even just crush them up or run over them with a lawnmower and stick that. That becomes mulch and it just goes underneath through all your shrubs. The only ones you really have to cover, and the, the Japanese do this with burlap. They they wrap, of course, they make beautiful sculptures, but they, they like if you have a fig tree or something that's a fruit tree, you can wrap that in burlap, loose burlap uh, over the winter and that helps. But generally, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, your perennials will either die back or your annuals will be completely gone and that's why they're called annuals. How early is it to start planning for your garden in spring? Like right now it's fall. Right now. Like when do things come like on sale or like are available? Like, you know, how, how, how does the cycle work? Okay, I usually, uh, it's now sort of the season is over. Usually in October, September, October, a lot of nurseries will have 50 off uh, on your perennials. They may not look so hot on the top, but you want to get them in the ground in September and October so they at least get the root system going because we don't really get heavy frost until at least December. Uh, I mean, we may get a frost on top, but not underneath in the soil. And then I, the other thing to do is I mentioned this at the last meeting is you don't have to have a beautiful diary, but get a notebook or something and write everything down what goes where, you know, the shrubs, obviously, if they're there all winter, you can remember where they are. But if you have a, a bunch of perennials that disappear, which means that they're herbaceous, uh, you write, write them all down where they are, because sometimes they start coming up, or when you've planted bulbs and things, they start coming up in the spring and you go, oh, what is that? I don't remember, which can easily happen because it's amazing how many months go by and then you think, whoop, gone out of my head. I would start planning now and then you start ordering from the catalogs in about February and they'll, they'll ask you when you want the stuff to show up. I tend to have it show up in late April because right here we're, we're all in the Yonkers 107, 08, 09 area. I think for those of us, if, if you're down south, does everybody know what zone we're in? We're in zone six, 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 seven. We're sort of on the cusp, which means that things can get really cold here and they'll still survive but we're not like new hampshire and uh upstate new york no that's too cold but i would right now i think most of the sales are over but start thinking about write everything down now start thinking about next year what you might like to do 
if it's a nice day, go sit on the porch or wherever you have with us or look at your house or your yard with a cup of tea and just think, oh, that would be nice. So what do you want to move around? Um, and then start ordering things in, uh, uh oh, sorry, I mean, that means the time's up. <laughs> Uh, start ordering in, I would say, February. The, cal the uh, catalogs will start showing up. I mean, they're coming now, but you can start looking at them now, but it's hard to think about next year until... There are a couple of good seed cattle. Uh, actually, and I tend to order plants, not seeds, because I don't have a great... I don't have a really bright house, so it's hard for me to germinate a lot of seeds and have them make it. I wish I had a greenhouse, I don't. So I, I tend to order little plants. I order from one place called um, Select Seeds. It's called SelectSeeds.com. It's not only seeds, but they have a whole lot of plants and they come about this big. I get them from get them to come in late, late April. They're beautifully packaged. Never lost one of them. They're very healthy and they're a good size when you get them. Um, Plant Delights is expensive, but they have really unusual things. For instance, if you like elephant ears, they have the kind of that are spotted and striped in a different color. John Sheepers, you can order from them now. They are great for bulbs. They have lovely, lovely bulbs and a big selection. Uh, what else do I... I mean, there, there are good cattle. Burpees is always a good one. But again, try to order plants and not seeds. Seeds only work on certain things like sunflowers, but then you have to cover them over because guess who comes along to munch on them and chew on them and eat them up and then you get all disappointed. So you just have to cover them. A white flower farm is good. Yeah, somebody just sent that in. They tend to have a bit of an attitude, but that's okay. You're just ordering online. You don't have to deal with anybody. I have a question about a plant. Mm -hmm. uh, I have two wax plants. I forgot the name. I, something like Hoya. Uh, what I like is they have little flowers that are made up of little stars. And um, what happened, one of them is fine. The other one has white, white on the leaves, white spots. Yeah, take take some people and wipe them off. That could be a uh, white fly, or there's another little buggy guy who's more cottony and fuzzy. I don't remember his name right now because that's an indoor plant problem. Yeah, and and don't water it. Underwater it. What underwater it? Yeah, don't overwater your plant. It, besides, it's got waxy leaves, which means it really retains a lot of water in the leaves, so you don't need to water the roots. Okay. It's probably getting overly saturated. And that yeah. will start to rot, and then the little bugs come. Uh huh. Always put your finger in the dirt. And, um, I mean, I have a plant, a little green thing. I don't know even what it is. Somebody gave it to me. I've got it on my windowsill. And I, I don't tend to kill plants, but I, I walk by every once in a while. And, Every once in a while the leaves will look a little huh. And so you'll be like, oh my God, it's um, the dirt is like cement and I'm water. And he goes, oh, thank you. And then it's fine. But you have to really let it go beyond where you think it needs to be. Because okay. the moment you think it feels slightly dry, don't water it. Remember there's water that's yeah. down at the bottom of the pot. It'll I don't you, see any, yeah, I don't see any bugs. I'm looking, but so well, it, it might be overwatered. Yeah. Well, that little fuzzy stuff means maybe those are where they're hatching their eggs. Uh-huh. Yeah, the little fuzzy stuff is not a good thing. That's called cotton fly or something. I can't remember exactly. Sorry. It, I just know it. You think, uh, not good. If it doesn't look like the plant you bought, <laughs> get rid of that fuzzy stuff or the green stuff or the black stuff. Sometimes you just need, if you have a le what leaf or two that doesn't look good, just pinch the leaf off. Otherwise, you don't want it to spread. One more question. I need, I read somewhere to push a stick to see how low the water has gone. You can, okay, you can stick your finger in there too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like the dipstick in your car. I mean, I guess you could do that with, I mean, the plant, it's not, believe me, it's not gonna dry out unless, it, I mean, it, it'll tell you. 
like the, it'll look it'll feel like sand or it'll it, the leaves will start doing something or the flowers will droop how do you know when it's overwatered um well it gets either gets black or squishy or the leaves turn a funky color or it gets yellow or things wilt and droop what are the top easiest plants to take care of indoors for New York? I would say not necessarily anything with flowers, but if you can see them in the um, in the malls. For those of us who used to go to the mall, <laughs> I mean, are the malls even open now? I don't know. Uh, philodendrons are good. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. If you go on, like, uh, yeah, I can't. There, it's um, spathophyllum is good. The uh, plantain, it's, um, it's the, you see it in every mall. It's got long green leaves with a white flower that comes up. I mean, I, I find, cause a lot of people like to put plants in their bathroom and stuff. And all, all these little guys will grow in a trash can practically. That's why they're in malls. But they're just lovely and green and they give you some greenery without, the spider plants do very well inside. They, they like to hang. I finally, I gave up on, on house plants years ago, but that's what I used to use all the time because I never seemed to have the right light, no matter where I lived. Catherine, can you just go slowly over the other ones? Cause we want to try to spell them correctly. Okay. Uh, philodendron, P-H, P-H-I-L, P-H-I-L-O-D-E-N, uh, D R O N. Great. And then the other couple of ones that you mentioned? A uh, spath a film. I think it's S P A T H spath. And then it's a film A A F I L U M or I F I L U M spath a film. Uh you know what? I have a. Um, I could make a list and send it. That to you. That would be great. Yes, and we can email it out. If anyone's interested in getting any of the handout lists, I put my email in the chat. Z at ypl.org. Drop me a line, and I would be happy to email you the list that Catherine puts together for us based on uh, the questions. Uh, and I'll also, um, I'll, I'll add a picture so you know which ones they are. Yes, African violets are really popular. Her sister-in-law right. was great at growing them, Mary says, but not her. Uh, again, they tend to get overwatered because they have thick uh, African violets, all the begonias and African violets, they, they, their leaves tend to be a little thicker. So they absorb, the water is all being held in there. So they don't need the roots, don't need it all the time. Yeah. And that way you do get some little flowers and they're good on a windowsill. But like all plants, you do have to be able to babysit them. I mean, as you walk through the room, just glance over and take a look and see how they're doing. You don't have to- Catherine, prefer Sorry. That's a, Catherine, do you recommend plant lights or um, spraying the water? Uh, you can, yeah. If you want to get into the whole plant light thing, sure. I've never done that, but uh, yeah, that's that's fine. The spritzing, it depends again where you live, but if you're in an apartment house, they tend to get very dry because the, the heat is not controlled by you necessarily. It's nice to br uh, bring in, a, that's another thing you can do is you can buy a small uh, humidifier and let that run. Um, you can spritz plants, but then you, if, you're, if you have a humidifier and you're also spritzing, you don't need to worry about those roots all the time. Remember the roots are, the roots are where they drink the water, but they don't want to get clogged up. So uh, you could also get a little, I don't know what you call it. It's like a barometer for humidity. You can get a little, it sticks on your wall. It'll tell you what your humidity is in your room and your, where your plants are. And if you bunch them together, they also you know, make some moisture. So it makes a little greenhouse for them if they're all together. You can also put out uh, trays of pebbles with water on them. It's sometimes better to do that rather than water the, the soil itself water in the tray of pebbles and that keeps it moist but separate from the roots and then the way that that way the roots can also suck up some of the water when needed but you're not flashing it in from the top i say when in doubt don't water 
and sometimes you know you think oh i'm really taking care of this i really love it and you want to fuss with your plants and sometimes they like to be left alone okay my mom is one on top of the plate okay somebody has a mom who puts theirs on a plate if you can get pebbles that's even better because that gives you a little separation it also gives you some air under there they like air plants need air they don't like when it gets too stuffy. I would think in Florida, humidity would be a real issue. You can also grow things in Florida. That, you know, you have shrubs of things that we have as house plants. So Florida is very, you know, enviable for that. But I'll put a list. I'll put a list together. And again, go online and just. You can Google anything and the answers will come, ideas will come up and answers will come up. It's been really, really helpful because I've given away half my gardening books just because I, you know, they're all like, how do you plant a house plant? And I thought, well, but you can get that online now. You don't need to have that in your shelf. But I've kept the really important books, obviously. Hi, everyone. This is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well. <laughs>